This video is for the purpose of my senior capstone project. It serves as the first part in a series of musical analysis of the Legend of Zelda video game series. The first video focuses solely on the music from Breath of the Wild. Wake up, Link. The most recent installment of the Legend of Zelda series, Breath of the Wild, released in 2017, yet again features the player's character Link, as he faces down the threat of the evil Calamity Ganon. The game was ranked first by Polygon and GamesRadar Plus, two reputable sources for all things video games. Breath of the Wild won Game of the Year in the Game Awards in the year of its release. What makes this game so well regarded? What made the 19.74 million people across multiple continents keep playing? My goal is to prove how music is one of the main reasons why this game is played and how it enhances players' experiences. Whether it is running through a field, riding a horse, fighting enemies, climbing a tower, or relaxing in a village, in Breath of the Wild, music is always in the background. Even in this video, the music of Laureland Village has been behind the dialogue. Have you noticed it? Or has it just been in the back of your head, doing things that you had no clue were occurring? Composed by Minata Kataoka, Yasuaki Iwata, and Hajime Wakai, the music fits many different genres as the player travels from desert oasis to active volcanoes. Take a listen. As you just heard, the desert theme has an air of mystery around it. Does it not feel like you are in a desert? Now, let's see how it compares to the volcano theme of Goron City. As you can see, there is a stark difference in the styles of music in Breath of the Wild. One features string instruments of Middle Eastern origin, and the scoring is very light, meaning there aren't too many different instruments playing at the same time, if any at all. It gives the player a feeling of being at one solitary point of relaxation in an arid desert under the scorching sun. Now take the theme of Goron City. This is a very brass heavy tune with a leading trombone. The theme is rowdy, or rambunctious in simplest terms, with many different instruments playing quite loud. This theme only plays while you are located at the base of a volcano, in blazing hot temperatures surrounded by creatures made of rock. This makes the player feel in danger, or alert, rather than relaxed like a desert oasis. So why is this the case, and why is it important? Before I explain why, I'm going to need to explain the basic theory on which most of these principles I'm going to reference are built off of. The flow theory by psychologist Mihai Csikszentmihalyi. Flow as described by Mihai is the sense of effortless action they feel in the moments that stand out as the best in their lives. He believed the easiest way to find this flow is through games. He saw that in games, the players were presented with clear goals in a controllable universe which provided immediate feedback. 
This leads into the idea of what is called game flow, described in 2005 by Penelope Sweetster and Peter Wyeth. Game flow is a list of criteria or a model based off of flow theory of what is required to immerse a player into the game. Their list goes as follows. Concentration, challenge, player skill, control, clear goals, feedback, immersion, and social interaction. There are two main criteria from this list which I would like to focus on that I believe are the key to why music is so important in gameplay. The first is concentration, and the second is immersion. Let's start with concentration, as this is the more simple and clear of the two principles. In a scenario where you are fighting a boss, and there is calming music playing in the background, you may not know specifically why, but you would be subconsciously paying attention to the music and unable to perform the task at hand. It is similar to a fly buzzing around your head, or a scent coming from another location. These things may be completely insignificant to the current situation, but it would be annoying or infuriating. You may be trying to focus on a hard challenge, but music that is light and airy is distracting as it doesn't fit the perceived difficulty of the situation, which I will expand upon later. Now on to the second of the criteria I want to expand upon, this being immersion, or how well the game can draw the players in. There are issues regarding the study of immersion, as the point of immersion is to make the player unable to notice the happenings of the world around them, meaning that if you were to ask the player if they were immersed, that in itself would require the breaking of immersion. A study was done in 2005 which studied the change of visual effects on immersion. Its results showed how visual realism does not have a large effect on player immersion. It is theorized, however, that music has a higher effect on immersion than graphics quality, especially when that music is abruptly changed. This can be backed up by the research performed by the Stanford University School of Medicine, which shows how music interacts with the brain. In this study, 18 participants with no musical training listened in an MRI to eight symphonies from the same composer. The results showed that peak brain activity occurs in the transition between pieces of music. The peak starts to rise around 10 seconds before this change, as the brain learns to anticipate when the transition is coming, and then settles down slowly for another 10 seconds after this transition. There are two different neural networks that fire during this highly active transition, the ventral frontotemporal network and the dorsal frontal parietal network and it is this anticipation which causes them to activate. The issue comes back to immersion when that musical transition is no longer predictable. If the music changes abruptly, or doesn't seem to fit the player's surroundings, this brain activity cannot occur, and the player's immersion is theoretically broken. Getting back to perceived difficulty. Perceived difficulty is how hard the players think the content of the game as a whole or certain parts of the game are. A study was performed in order to see how music affects the player's perceived difficulty. There were three groups, and their first task was simply to rate themselves individually on how good they thought they were at video games. Group A, with 13 players, had 7 confident or hardcore gamers. Group B had 11 total, and 8 of them said they were experienced or slightly less intense than hardcore gamers, and they only had 2 hardcore gamers and Group C, with only 10 people, had 6 hardcore gamers. Once they had declared how good they believed they were, the groups were exposed to a simple game with 3 stages. The game had similar mechanics to that of Flappy Bird, so it should have been easy for the players of any level to get through. Group A would play the game without any music, Group B would play the game with music that matched the level of difficulty, and Group C played with music that did not match the level of difficulty. Now to define matching music. This was determined by the intensity of the game, meaning louder or higher tempo was used when the difficulty is harder, and softer and slower for parts of lower difficulty. Group B perceived the general difficulty much differently than the other two groups, specifically on the second or most difficult stage. The matching music made the game seem much harder at a 5.18 out of 10, on average versus the 4.00 and 4.10 respectively of groups A and C. It must be noted that there are other possible reasons than music that could make this difference, such as the players in a specific group had lower skill than players in another group, the player's idea of what is considered difficult or easy is different, 
the player's skills improved as they played more stages, or anticipated difficulty affected their ratings. So, the researchers had to find ways to eliminate the other possibilities for perceived difficulty, and prove that music has an effect in doing so. The easiest of those to measure was the anticipated difficulty of the stage. By making the third stage less difficult than the second stage, the gamer's natural thought process of the next stage being harder was thrown off. However, Group A with no music recognized the drop in difficulty, and Group B who received less intense music on the less intense stage also recognized it. Group C on the other hand who received more intense music rated it equally as hard on average than the prior level. Specifically, 8 out of 10 thought it was of equal or higher difficulty than Stage 2, versus 61.5 and 72.7 who thought it was easier from Group A and Group B respectively. In order to track whether or not the players improved over time, the number of mistakes of 6 of the players were observed. The players observed in Group A reflected the difficulty of the stage as well, and as they progressed, one did seem to master the controls better, however the second did not. The same can be said about the players in Group B with matching music. The players of Group C, who had non-matching music while playing, specifically the second player, made just as many mistakes in the third stage as in the second stage. With these extra parameters and observations, it does seem like music truly does change the player's perception of how difficult the game is.